Bring those breaths in and out. This story opens with a poem written during another hard season, a time of my own existential crisis, uncertain of my purpose and my beliefs and my identity. At a loss for how to be in, the sh in my life, I stand on the shore of the ocean in the throes of anxiety and depression, searching for a sign of hope when this poem called Breathe rises up as though whispered by the ocean herself. Listen, the ocean calls us to her. Feel her reach out and touch you, drawing you in. Watch as the waves cover and uncover what is held within. Breathe, breathe deeply to the rhythm of the sea, a rhythm deep as ocean's floor, a rhythm high as sky ceiling, constant as water in earth's veins. Breathing deeply, the breath I breathe is the same breath that yesterday touched the nose of the ancient tortoise. This breath is the same breath that now sails the back of the wind. Tomorrow, my child, you too shall breathe the same breath. Breathe deeply. Tossed and turned, molded and remolded, wind and wave broken becoming sand of the earth, forming new land. Here I am and I breathe. Forty-four years ago, tiny me slips into the arms of my loving parents who burst into the song of the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Throughout my, my life, I hear the story of this birth, of my birth, and it's a gift to be welcomed in this way, deeply wanted and truly loved. Yet somehow, along with that welcome is a confusion and a lurking doubt of whether I really belong. I hear a conflicting voice saying, who do you think you are, God's gift to the world? This plays itself out as a scattered confusion inside of me. I try to make myself fit, to prove my worth, and convince the world that I am good enough to be a part of it. Throughout my adult life, I work in many different jobs, switching quickly from a lighthearted retail job into work that I deem more purposeful. I dive with passion into each new career with a commitment to change. Social work, education, environment, edu um, international community development, and, and even job growth. I try so hard to do good work, life-changing work, but nothing I do seems to be quite good enough. By the age of 35, I am broken, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Bed bound with debilitating pain, I don't know if I'll walk again. I think I must be dying. 
Doctors tell me it's my nerves and a narrow spine. They offer back surgery. Instead, I find a healer who mends by touch. He gets me walking again. And the experience is so profound that I decide to learn his technique. By the age of 37, I've begun work as a healer, helping others who are in pain. I love the work. It feels purposeful and I'm good at it. But the nagging sense that it isn't enough and the stirrings of the same scattered confusion I felt before are still with me. I find a lovely little garden cottage for my healing body work and the walls call for color and art. I've been creative before during an earlier time in my life and I have the audacious idea that I could be the one to make the art. Taking a deep breath, I purchase art supplies and what seems like a giant canvas. I hang the canvas on the wall of my office for all to see. I hang it as an act of inspiration, determined to actually complete this intended creation. It hangs there for months. My clients come and go with more than one commenting on the blank canvas. What an interesting artistic statement. <laughs> I just laugh and nod and wonder and hope that one day the idea for what the canvas needs will come and, and that I'll somehow be able to capture the idea that rises. Around the same time, a strange and disconcerting thing begins to happen. I hear a voice that's calling me names. It calls me a name that reveals in me a deep and unknown shame. The voice makes me feel like a fool, like a failure. The name makes me want to retreat into myself and disappear. Beached whale. You're a beached whale, says the voice. I try to silence it. And when that doesn't work, I aim to drown it out. I look for assurance from the people around me. My husband, my children, my friends, my patients. Turning up the volume on the voices around me helps in a way, but the voice is still there. A constant presence calling me a beached whale. My back begins to ache again. So I find another healer who comes to my cottage, begins her work, invites my rigid muscles to let go. She asks me to vocalize while she works directing my voice to enter my body. I try though, I feel awkward and only a whisper comes at first. <sighs> she joins with me, coaxing my volume to strengthen and we vocalize together. <sighs> that fill me are whale sounds, mournful whale songs. My voice reaches deep inside and pulls out of me a grief I haven't allowed myself to feel and I weep from a depth unknown. I realize that I am the beached whale in that I am so stuck in uncertainty and unknowing trapped in a way that does not belong for reasons I do not know. But I know now what the canvas is waiting for. The canvas needs what a beached whale needs. She needs to get back to the water. She needs to be lifted from the shore and carried back to the sea. Just like I need something to buoy me and lift my spirit from the stuck place that holds me trapped as well. 
that afternoon, I take a pencil and on the canvas sketch a woman standing in a tree looking out to sea. And there on the horizon is a whale breaching, set free. The sketch remains unchanged for another month or so. I don't know what to do next. I've, I've purchased paints and brushes, but I have no technique or training to guide me. I don't want to ruin what seems inspired in some way. So I, I, I wait until the thought of collage comes to me. I don't know how to paint, but I, I can piece together paper. Let me show you. Oh, hang on. I'm gonna share my screen. This is that piece called Off the Shore. But getting off the shore doesn't come as easily as it may seem. I decide to use the moon cycles as a way to schedule time to create. So with each full and new moon, collage begins to fill the canvas. First come the sky, then the sea and the shore. I'm so pleased with the work. It's peaceful. I feel a satisfied calm within me a growing confidence that this could be good. And then it's time for the land. Now over all my travels, I've gathered scraps and images along the way and stowed them for the day when I'd find a use for them. I take the pages I'd saved and begin to pull them apart and put them back together again. I see the patterns connect, spiraling tree branches align with the roof line of the temple. A circle of women gather around the table. A monk climbs the stairs as the travelers descend to meet him. A frenzy overtakes me as I piece images together as though driven by some unseen force. I see the flow form so naturally from one image of human interaction and connection merging with the next. When I finally pause, it's as though I'm stepping out of a trance. I step back to look at my work and everything changes before my eyes. The land begins to spin. Where before there'd been connection, there's now chaos and overwhelm. Instead of the beautiful calm and peacefulness I had felt before, all I can feel is the certainty I have ruined everything. I drive home with a feeling of panicked dread, shallow breath, pounding heart. I desperately try to think of how to hide what I've done to undo the mistake, desperate to find a way to salvage the wreck, fearful that it's all a waste. I'm going around and around in circles. Eventually, I recognize this feeling of panic and dread as familiar. I wait and listen for what my, I might need to hear. Allow the chaos to calm. And in the weeks to come, slowly put the final pieces together. Three trees of wood, stone, and metal. A bell of mindfulness at the center of the ocean. Two eagles gripped in near fatal flight. A hand reaching out. What I finally realized in the making of this collage is that here in the land of human interaction and connectedness is where I become stuck. 
confused, unable to experience the beauty and joy of being alive. This is where I become beached. Here, surrounded by my beloved community is where I also feel the most alone. In the making of this collage, I learned that within the need to free myself from the shores is also a need to understand more fully why I become stuck. I hear the call to see the whale and what brings her to the shore. And that leads to the making of this second piece called Into the Deep. Now my process of creating changes between the making of Off the Shore and Into the Deep. With Off the Shore, I knew the essence and the intent of what I wanted to make. With Into the Deep, all I know is that this is an exploration, a revelation. I am in a state of pure discovery and I do not know what I will find, but I know what I'm called to do. The call to go to the deepest and darkest part of myself repeats again and again. Now a call to explore and reveal on a canvas the deepest and darkest part of oneself is not something to take lightly. This is what I've avoided and resisted and hidden from even myself. I know that I can't ignore the call, but I'm afraid of what I will find. You should know that when I make these collages, I, I don't know what will appear on the canvas. I don't plan it out in advance. Instead, I follow an intuitive process. I ask a question or set an intention and then allow the unfolding of what becomes the answer or the insight. I usually begin with a meditation and a time of clearing the inner cacophony before beginning the work of creation. This is a spiritual process, each piece like a prayer, a conversation between myself and the divine which is why it is strange that my call is to the dark, to the deep, where I feel an unknown terror lurking as though there's a shadow that plays in the light of my heart. Because I leverage the moon to pull me forward, Carving out time to create during the full and new moons, each piece takes months to complete. With the first moon come the spelunkers exploring the caverns of the underworld. Above is a church cast in shadow, a cross wrapped in barbed wire and a graveyard. Oops. From the graveyard, parrots of brilliant glowing green take flight into a stormy night sky. And far across the canvas at the horizon, a whale and the diver meet over the deep. Along with paper and glue, I create in sound and word as well. A series of songs and poetry come like gifts that float up and out of me, nearly fully formed, and thankfully caught in the net of the recording app on my phone. <laughs> the strange and awkward thing about these words from my deep, oh, yes. The strange and awkward thing about these words from my deep is that they are about death and loss, depression, and even suicide. They're not exactly the kind of material you bring to share at a party. Terror fills my stomach as I write and feel the resonance of the words within me, haunting and beautiful. These need to be shared, need to be spoken and sung, but I don't know how to share them or, or what they mean for me. I'm standing on the precipice. Some part of me 
begging to be set free, but free from what? Why are these? Me- is this message coming from me? What is it I am supposed to learn? Why? What am I doing here? Through the creation of Into the Deep, I encounter the hidden self that has been actively choosing whether to live or leave my life. There's so much I still don't understand and I may need to create a hundred more shows to unravel the twisting confusion woven deep inside. But I do know that by allowing my cry for mercy to have a voice, this beached part of me that was dying now wants to find a way to live. Over the years, I've worn many masks, not on purpose or to deceive anyone, but trying to be what I thought I was supposed to be. In this collage, there's a fire that melts the frigid underworld. And the fuel for the fire is a mask torn apart and burned. The melting snow and ice form a flow that feeds the life stream that cycles out of the deep and around and through everything. And over all is the cosmos. fueled by the courage gained by facing my deepest, darkest self, I determine to set myself free. This piece is called Emergence. And I begin this canvas with a newfound confidence and determination that can only come from facing one's fears. I am sure that the time has come finally for me to emerge and become my true self, for the beached whale to become free from the shore at last, unrestrained, uncontained. In large letters on the canvas, I boldly write the words, emergence, tearing into newness, tumbling into flight, learning who and how to be, from darkness comes new sight. With certainty, I begin the process, meditation and clearing, gathering of pages and then tearing and gluing, allowing the unfolding of what will be. (laughs) I don't expect what comes first. Clear cut deforestation, mountains carved apart by mining, and a woman walking alone in a desert void of life. I had been expecting butterflies, not destruction and death. (laughs) But before the butterflies appear on this canvas, first come the bees and then a burst of colorful bloom that spreads from the center out along the edges of destruction bringing life back to the forest, reviving a living desert, transforming and reclaiming burgeoning life. And as the cycle of life fills the canvas, another horizon line begins to emerge. And I feel the need to turn everything upside down. Here is the whale breaching, touching the beak of this bird perched in a tree waiting to take flight. But before I learn to fly, I have one more story to tell you about this boat in the sea. During the months as I work on emergence, I attend a shamanic journey led by another local healer, 
Now this is a 45 minute drum induced vision quest, no drugs involved. He guides us and I find myself on the shore of the ocean yet again. A boat made for one is waiting for me and carries me across the water propelled by an unseen force toward an island with a tall tower. When the boat reaches the island, I secure it, enter the tower, climb a spiral staircase high above the clouds and enter a realm of pure light, full of absolute goodness, kindness, and, and wisdom. I ask the beings of this realm if they could teach me what I must do in my life. And a scroll appears with a quill that begins to write. As I strain to see what is written, the scroll is whisked away and disappears. And I'm told it's time to leave. I resist, desperate to see what was written on the scroll. I, I beg for another glimpse. Sure, it contains what I need to know to best live my life. In answer to my resistance, I am ushered out and tossed down the stairs. I fall head over heels, tumbling down and down. My body is braced, ready for impact, anticipating pain. After what seems like an eternity of falling, I notice there's no impact and only the pain of my own resistance. I relax and soften. The light beings are still with me, catching me even as I fall. As this awareness dawns on me, they stand me on my feet and I ask them if they would come with me. They agree and we descend together, emerging into sunlight. I stride across the grass, leading the way toward the dock until I'm struck by the fact that the boat was only made for one. There can't be room for all of us. And the only choice I can see is to let my guests go ahead without me. The thought of staying behind and losing all that I love and cherish in my life brings me to my knees. When a voice whispers within me, Beloved, this boat is made for you. You can invite whoever you want to come with you, but this, there will always be room for you because this boat is made for you. A flood of relief flows through me with the assurance that I belong. This boat is made for me. There is always room for me. That, that means I belong. That means this life is made for me. I am made for this life. There's always room for me, no matter what. Years ago, I had a dream to create a community that would be a place of healing, a place where we mend what is broken within and around and between us. I keep looking for the clues that will tell me I'm ready, that I'm finally good enough to make this world a better place. I'm finding that the clues are all around me. The clues are in the clutter. The clues are on the canvas. The clues are in the chaos and even in the resistance. The hope is in the cycles. What I've learned from making emergence is that the best version of me is the only one that exists. The one right here, living this life, figuring it out step by step before your very eyes. It doesn't matter what stage of life I'm in, I'm not yet done the work of living. And neither are you. 
we're growing our courage and capacity for what comes next. I can see now that the community, like the boat, is already here. I already belong to it, and so do you. We are already a part. We're a part of one another. We are one, and we all belong. Every single one of us. We are each the whale and the woman. We may each be stranded on the shore and swimming in the sea and living on the land from one moment to the next in a continuous process of emergence. <sighs> to close this time together, I'd like to share a final song with you. And like the poem at the beginning, this too came to me in a whisper. And this song is called Shadowed Mystery. There is a great mystery far beyond anything I can see. There's a shadow that plays in the light of my heart that comes from the dark in the depths of my soul. She whispers my name and sounds just the same as the wind that blows from the depths of my soul. There is a great mystery far beyond anything I can see. There's a weight that hangs ever heavy in my heart. Is it you, Shadow, here with me, Shadow? What does it mean and what do you want from me, Shadow? What do you want from me? I want to step from the box you've prepared for me. I'm contained. It's free. I'd like to be. Don't take me for granted anymore. Don't take me for granted anymore. Do you really love me? Do you really need me? Do you really want me? Don't take me for granted. I want to be free. I want to dance. I want to sing. I want to play. I want to come into the light in the middle of the day. I want to stare up at the sky full of stars in the night. I want everything I touch to be filled with pure sight. There's a shadow that plays in the light of my heart. She comes from the dark in the depths of my soul. She whispers my name and sounds just the same as the wind that blows from the ends of the earth. There is a great mystery far beyond anything I can see. So stop the share there. May you, like the whale and the woman, continue to move through the phases within your life. 
and emerge into flight again and again. <laughs> Thank you. Can we just off mute for a minute and give Jenna some applause? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Yay. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> One day we'll be back together again <laughs> and do this live. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, so yeah, I know Leslie, um, we'll, we'll move into discussion. Do you want to lead us, Leslie, or do you have a question or comment? Oh yeah. Is, is it, no, is it time no. for, for leading? Into yeah. Discussion? Let's, let's move into um, discussion. Thank you so much for holding the space for me and, and being part of this. this is the kind of the first public performance of this with um, an open invitation. So Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just I just wanted to say, Jenna, that it was absolutely beautiful. And I, I love the, the artwork, the poetry, um, the singing, all of it. And and you being vulnerable and sharing your heart and and um, and your journey. You know, I think I think we're all kind of like indoctrinated and plummeted with all this advertising and all these ideas about who we're supposed to be. And I think it's very courageous and important for us to go inside and um, take a look in, in the parts that are uncomfortable and terrifying, you know, and, and try to merge like sit with them and, and, and interweave them into like who you are, you know, it's, I feel like it's so good or bad, you know, right and wrong in our society. And, and it's like, I feel like you're embracing all of you. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's and, all, yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. So I really appreciated it. It was just absolutely beautiful and just a great reminder for humanity to remember that it's okay to be all of ourselves, you know? Yeah, the lesson of, um, the lesson for all of those of us who are kind of stuck in perfectionism, that, that we, we never will reach mastery if we do not fail again and again. <laughs> like that is like, it's how you learn to walk. It's how you learn to ride a bike. <laughs> it's like how we do everything. So um we have to be willing to fall yeah um jim i see your hand yeah i just wanted to say you i heard the word perfectionism and uh as an engineer one of the things we learn is that perfection is sometimes the enemy of success mm -hmm. uh, you you can't always <laughs> satisfy everything and i'm an aerospace engineer and there, there's an interesting set of pictures where the, the structural engineer wants to make things out of two by fours and, and the uh, aeronautical engineer wants to make real long skinny wings, but of course they're too weak. And, and you know, all of the different specialties want to maximize their side of the story and none of it works. You have to, everybody compromise to get something that works together. Right. Mm. yeah if we could teach that in school like maybe like narrowing the distance to perfection is like is the aim <laughs> like here's the the perfect model and then how close can we get maybe but i don't know <laughs> jenna i i i kind of relate to what jim says i'm a mathematician mm. and uh you know perfectionism is is unattainable and i struggle with perfectionism in my own personal life. I really do. It's very difficult. And I have to remind myself that, you know, it's just an aspiration. I guess I'll never, nobody can ever be perfect, but it could be something that will make us be better every day. I mean, that's one way to look at it positively. 
And it's interesting because at the coffee hour, we're talking about the very thing about perfectionism. And it's really oh. something I struggle with so hard. It is so difficult. So I really love what you said. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Jerry, I see your hand. Yes. Um, wonderful, beautiful thing. I, the creativity is, is such a wonderful way to, uh, to in the arts to express uh, your, your, your journey. There, there are two things. Uh, first of all, when you went to the place of no butterflies mm. and the woman walking in the desert, and then suddenly you were transposed to a better place. And I kind of got lost in that transition. Okay. That was the first thing. And the second thing I'll just tell you is that I would like for you to say more about the metaphor of the boat. Oh, um, more about the metaphor of the boat. The, um, thank you for the note on the transition being difficult there. Um, mm -hmm. I'll take that into as, as, as a note for me to review. And um, the boat, so, um, I think that, I think that a, a, something that's happened throughout my life is this, this, and maybe for a lot of, a lot of us, I think, is this fear that we are going to be excluded and that there is not room for us all. That, um, that like there's been this fear that I'll like usurp my own position, but I'm like, and this tendency to give it away and then fear that. So then there's a gripping and there's a paralysis in that because we can't really, um, it's, the, it's the existential crisis. If, um, if me doing what's good and right requires me to um, like give up my spot, my place, then, then where do I fit in? And, and in fact, I think that's a really important thing to, for us to talk about and kind of examine here. It, when some of the reactivity to, um, to anti-racism and to things like that, like the, the, I think there is this existential fear of displacement that mm -hmm. a lot of us carry. And, um, and for me, uh, being raised, I was raised in a very conservative Christian upbringing. Um, and the pinnacle point of perfection was where we were required to walk. And um, the goodness that we were required to continue and the self-sacrificing, like, be like Jesus, um, to me was, like, I think I, I somehow I drilled it into, like, this I mean, Jesus died, right? Died on the cross he sa to save all of humanity was, was what I was taught. And so does that, is that what being like Jesus means ultimately? Like for me, I think that was woven and embedded deep, deep, deep down inside. Um, and so some of that's been like, this has been an extraction and a rewriting, a re-narrative, creating a new narrative for what is within me and um, to, to, at least go alongside of those unconscious beliefs that are still there that I consciously don't believe that anymore, but, but the, the visceral belief is still there, that unconscious belief. So I'm trying to write a new narrative um, that will hopefully replace that old one that doesn't serve me anymore. Um, I, that that's the boat has that kind of power of symbolism to me. I don't know if that answers your question, Jerry, or if you want to clarify that. I, I, I think that that's fine for now. Mm -hmm. we'll let some others. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm, my pleasure. Yeah, I see David, you wrote, you're not the only one recovering from that kind of upbringing. Absolutely. <laughs> I know you and I share a similar background. Um, we both went to Christian <laughs> school our whole lives together. So lots of, lots of stuff to unpack there. <laughs> I'll need a few more shows and Dave, David's a writer also. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll make a comment. You certainly do like the water. <laughs> well, yeah. Wow. The water's the water, been a really. Sea, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It means but a lot you, to you. It, it does. And um, the pieces that I, that I extracted for this performance um, 
relate more to the water and to the whale. Um, and, and there's, there's a danger there too. Cause for me, actually that, that metaphor of the water and the ocean, the call to the sea, it was, uh, you had mentioned before the show about suicidal ideation and, um, and there's a balance, there's a, there's both a healing there. Water can be, can be healing, but it can also be very dangerous. And, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and well, like the poem in the beginning, the poem Breathe that I shared with you, that was written, that came to me on the edge of the Indian Ocean, where I was standing there on the shore that the tsunami had come through two years before and just wreaked devastation. And I was standing there and it was beautiful and calm and peaceful. And the, 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 those two truths, we're right there mm. in that moment. Mm. And from that ocean of destruction and, and healing, like, and destruction and calm, both like came this, came this poem that for me has been very healing. Um, but, the, but the potential is there and the, um, yeah. Yeah. It's almost like the walk to walk through this healing for someone in depression. It is a dangerous one. And to, to work through mm -hmm. all of this stuff for me, it does, it has brought up a lot more of that, that I have to really walk through the, um, that call, the call to the ocean can be a lure of suicide mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it can be a lure, a, a, a call to healing and, and to the spirit. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. there's a nuance there. It's a, it's a precarious place. Um, and needs to be done, I think with a very, a net, a wide net of support. So, I mean, if anyone else is struggling, I highly recommend therapy, <laughs> get in groups, have friends who you could talk to. Like I have a very broad base of support of people who I call on, um, who, who are in this journey with me. Um, not keep it secret. Yeah. Leslie. I'm just curious, um, has, you're obviously a creative and that's beautiful. I'm a creative too. And so I can, I love it. I think we're all creative. And so um, just the fact that you're utilizing all these pieces is so great. And I'm just wondering, has, do you feel like doing the collage and the singing and the poetry and presentation is, is healing you? Do you feel like it's helping to integrate all those pieces mm -hmm. of yourself to kind of accept? Absolutely. Absolutely. And and you and I have talked about this before. I think you were inspiration to me a long time ago talking about putting your art on the wall, even though it was really dark and, and, and gritty. Yeah. Um, putting it up so yes. it could reflect back. Um, I yes. feel like my art speaks to me. And, and mm -hmm. even this show, as I've been rehearsing it, as I... Um, as I was putting it together and writing it, and now as I'm performing it, I'm hearing parts of it that I didn't know were there, and it's speaking to mm -hmm. me in new ways, and it is definitely part of this healing, and it's part of, I think, embedding the, the new beliefs in deeply. So me saying mm -hmm. these things over and telling the story again and again, it's going to be part, it is part of what's... Um, helping it become really real inside of me. Mm -hmm. So having it on the walls and seeing it day by day by day and then telling it casually to friends what, hap what the story is and then now this, this crafting and refinement absolutely is a very healing. Um, and it's also dangerous. Like it's extreme, like those stepping out into new layers of vulnerability, the fear of, of like rejection is so real. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, and in this group, like, <laughs> I was scared to bring it here, like, oh, but I'm like, I'm white. So what place do I have to like be sharing my story? <laughs> and it's like, why am I, I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I'm like, <laughs> like canceling. Well, you know, this is, <laughs> this is humanity. This, this is humanity. I think that's one of the reasons I love like art and therapy mm -hmm. world and all that is because it's like, it's humanity and we all can, we all can connect mm -hmm. to pieces mm -hmm. of, in different ways. Yeah. 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 
So. I, I, I've ex experienced a, a, a real power and a confidence coming from you, uh, which was a wonderful thing. I, I, I see in you now, um, as you present yourself, just, just a tremendous power mm -hmm. and, and, and a kind of, I kind of gentle forcefulness. Uh, you know, I mm -hmm. have some experience with, in mental health with the dealing with schizophrenia and I have a son who has schizophrenia. And the, uh, the, the irony, uh, or one of the ironies of life is that in schizophrenia, like my son would have a florid psychosis, which was incredibly creative. So that's speaking to your, you know, the destructive creative side mm -hmm. and, and dealing with people like in paranoid schizophrenia can be incredibly creative in what they feel is against them or somebody saying that the TV is talking to them. So there's fantastic creativity and mental illness. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and I mean, maybe there's just, maybe that, that, maybe there's an overlap between like the creative genius and the creative insanity and the, um, and, uh, those of us who are going to go there i mean like i'm talking about voices and and hearing these things in my head that i mean i'm not hearing voices out in the room like someone with schizophrenia would would be hearing i'm not hearing the television talk um i didn't literally hear the ocean whisper to me it's just like i mean like it kind of came up within me i'm glad you're clear. But, i mean but but right the way it 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 does sound that way and so there was that's another vulnerability like that's been a fear of mine. Okay, as I put this out there, am I going to get like dragged away in the white coat by the white coats? And like, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I, I have, I do have diagnoses with my own uh, mental mental health diagnoses, but um, but yeah, not the same. It's a little different. Yeah. At any rate, can you hear me? This is Vivian. Yes, Vivian. Yes. Thank you so much. I think that you're, um, you talk about vulnerability, but there's such a great strength in your vulnerability mm -hmm. because you, you are able to share it with us and with others. And that's a very strong thing to be able to do, to be able to share your vulnerability. And I was wondering, are you currently working on a canvas? I am. <laughs> Oh. I have I have three large canvases <laughs> that I'm working on simultaneously, um, and I I've started painting, um, and these three at least one of them is a fusion of painting and collage together. So I'm kind of creating a new uh, art form, I guess, um, just exploring and and seeing where it goes. So that sounds very exciting. Yeah. Yes. And it's yeah, yeah, yeah. The, one of the things you said, Vivian, and then a Jim, I'll go mm -hmm. to you. Um, you said there's a strength in that vulnerability, and mm -hmm. and I think that it's really worth kind of remembering that. I think there's a practice that that builds strength and the ability to be strong in vulnerability. Um, uh, not 10 years ago, like I would have, one never dreamed of doing this. Um, and the, the broken, fr the fragility within me was so severe. Um, and, and so I've done a lot of work over the last decade to get stronger around the most fragile parts of me. And, um, and I think that for those of us who are so like have this brokenness inside, maybe all of us, but at least there are a, certainly a lot of us who have this brokenness inside that is fragile. And I think one of the things I really want to say about that is that you can't expect to be strong enough to go and be vulnerable like this, like what I'm doing 
without doing all the steps along the way to kind of craft and make that strength, grow that and cultivate that strength. Um, I think if I had tried to do this, I would not be with you today. Um, <laughs> because, and, and it's like, we have to keep growing bit by bit and um, expand what our capacity is. And, and sometimes it starts with just like writing the words in the journal, like I'm thinking about killing myself or something like that, maybe that vulnerability to oneself or sh and then sharing with a person outside of oneself, like these thoughts ran through my head. Like to be able to say those words the first time for me, even to say that I am depressed, like those words were like frozen inside of my mouth. I couldn't um, put the words out. It, it just locked it took a lot of work to, just to be able to speak um, what was inside. And, uh, mm -hmm. and now um, I've kind of blocked, cleared that dam, I guess. <laughs> Not talk too much probably, but <laughs> so well, anyway. I think that your performance will be of great help to many people. Mm. It will help us to search within. It will help us to realize our strength and our vulnerabilities. And it'll help us to realize how common a human reaction is to feel vulnerable and to feel incomplete and mm. to feel unacceptable. So I think it's a wonderful message to bring. You bring strength to all of us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Jim has something and then there's a question in the chat that we'll address. I love what you have uh, shared with us and I, love and find very intriguing the methods that you have utilized to do so. It's very unique. Uh, I'm in the background. I had, there's one of my wife's cloths, paintings, whatever. It's not painting, it's cloth. Mm -hmm. And you have managed to use that, to use song, to use the storytelling that really gets a mm -hmm. message across. And I think you were very brave to get into the areas that you were getting into. And I'm sure that many of us, uh, including me, have struggled with, with a lot of these things. And even at my age are still looking for the answer to some of these mysteries. And maybe this will help us in that journey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jim. Well, and Jim, you and Tricia were there last at the art exhibit holding space with me while I was kind of crafting and shifting and changing. <laughs> so thank you. I mean, we all kind of get to support one another as we move through this. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, David, you wrote a long comment here. Let's see. Um, Going back to the water as suicide and such, what about as rebirth, reformation? Water can change to a solid or gas and back and can transform things. It can reshape stones and continents. Absolutely. And then there's that thing about never stepping into the same river twice or stepping into a river and remaining unchanged. Maybe it's less suicide ideation and more death as we are now combined with birth of who we are becoming. Not that any of that water makes water or change any less dangerous or us any less vulnerable. Um, <laughs> I see you've got a cold. <laughs> um, oh. <yeah. laughs> <a sponsor. laughs> <You're so funny. laughs> we That's won't creative. ask for a show if you just monster. <laughs> David's very creative. Um, <laughs> yeah. That is so, so many different ways to go with that. The pieces behind me, actually, um, I think might be the next show. I'm kind of like, the next show is sort of like churning inside of me while I'm rehearsing for this one. It's funny. Um, but uh, birth, death, rebirth. Yeah, um, for sure. There's that, that continuous renewal. Um, and yeah, absolutely. The um, rebirth, 
with the water. Yeah, I'll need to sit with that a little more too and see how that becomes a piece of that. But for sure, the cycles, the cycles of life. I mean, um, one of the first things I did that was very healing for me, um, when, when we lived overseas, um, that was the deepest, darkest um, depression that I had when we were um, living in Vietnam not because of Vietnam, there were other things going on. <laughs> Vietnam was wonderful. And um, we came back, we came to California and I didn't actually know anybody here. We, I'm from the East Coast. So we, it was a new, new place. And I was very broken and um, trying, to, trying to heal. And I learned to compost and composting, the act of composting and taking the rot and turning it back into the earth and seeing it transform into something new, into rich, rich soil is, I mean, that's just been such a powerful um, practice for me and a very powerful uh, metaphor in life. Um, so talk about rebirth. Yeah. That's a tangible rebirth that you can be part of like <laughs> with all your mundane day-to-day -day -day waste. Um, so, yeah. Anyone else? Jerry? I wanted to uh, comment uh, following what Jim had to say. Uh, I, I uh, certainly agree with it. But, but I wanted to say that w what you are presenting uh, experientially mm. uh, not only speaks to a person who is broken, who is going through a difficult time. Uh, that's where I was uh, l this last year following a divorce uh, mm -hmm. of a marriage that was 33 years where my ex-wife decided to end it. And that was a very difficult time for me and starting a whole new life, you know, at age 65. So, so, but I'm past that now and I'm in a good place. But I want you to know that you speak to me in a good place because mm -hmm. not only do you speak uh, of the hard times, but you also present a, a model for growth. Mm. So, so, so it's more than just the brokenness. It's also how does the person that's doing well now do even better uh, by, by, by growing? Mm -hmm. and, and that's a big thing is, is the growth. So I, I want to, to uh, thank you for, for, for the, that idea of growth and, and, and helps me like, well, what do I need to grow with? Go, go uh, to and from and to, and and one of my I think uh, for me I think the vulnerability now is is what I want to work on. Mm -hmm. And you kind of broken the ground for that. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, that that actually leads me to a question or a request, I guess, to all of you. I'm I'm trying to figure out how to take this forward, where it should go, who needs to hear it. Um, it. It felt like it's an important thing for me to get out and beyond just me. And um, so now I'm, I'm trying to find connections both locally, but also uh, my intention is to take this um, across the country and um, beyond. I have this like wild dream. <laughs> this like fantasy of <laughs> go for it <laughs> my so so i'm from delaware and i have this fantasy that joe biden will invite me to the rose garden our fellow delawarean <laughs> for a performance of emergency <laughs> yeah why not that's dream awesome big, right? why not dream big yeah and put it, and put it out there verbally <laughs> so, yeah not, not yeah. a fantasy an objective or a goal oh, thank either. you thank you felicity i appreciate that <laughs> So, um, and, and so part of what I'm hoping to bring out just to um, kind of craft that vision a little more with you is this, this performance, but then also there's um, some of you participated last when during the art exhibit in a collage workshop that I, that I created too. And so, so I envision having like a day event, like kind of like a retreat where people would come. There can be, people could come just for the performance. That's fine, come and go. But then for those who want to engage more, um, we'd have the collage workshop. And, and there's both individual workshops, 
But the most powerful to me, I think, is the collaborative collage workshop where we have a group of people coming together and working and creating together. And it's a powerful, profound experience and it's very healing to co-create with other people. Um, so, so I imagine on this tour, I wanna create a trail of art across the, uh, along the way and have um, both me sharing my show, but then also guide, lead these workshops and have people create themselves and then have that stay in their communities. Um, and I also, the, as a healer, know that um, we're hard to find. And um, the, the healers in the local communities don't have a very large platform. And so I'd like to call up the healers in the different communities to come out of the woodwork and be available and be seen. Um, the healers who heal by touch, those who heal the spirit. Um, I know we have, of course, doctors and, and psychologists and those, those kind of healers are, are seen, but there's the whole other world of healing, the, um, the body workers, um, especially who are very invisible and, um, and are really, I think are needed. Um, needed to be part. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who help us connect mind, heart, body, soul in a way that no one else is doing. And um, so that's another piece of what I'm, I'm somehow trying to envision how to, how to bring all those parts together. So I'd yeah. like, a, I'd like to find a bridge so that, that the, the medical professional profession is not threatened by the body work profession, which it feels right now that that is like, there is such a gap between us. We can't, there's not a partnership and it, it's time to partner. Yeah. Oh, um, Jenna, <clears throat> I'll just say that like, um, <clears throat> maybe you could check this out too, but I think, you know, as I'm a therapist for those who mm -hmm. don't know, and, um, you know, and an artist and a writer and all these things. Mm -hmm. And I love what Jen is doing. And so I, I will just say this, that there is a lot of openness within the mental health community mm -hmm. to embrace new ways, because we know, I think, I think we're very yeah. clear, a lot yeah. of us, not some of us are defensive, but we're, we're pretty clear that we need more. That, that everybody, yeah. you know, that creativity, that, that all these other pieces are, you know, land on our clients in all these different ways. And some people really, this is their way is to be yeah. creative or write or to do whatever. Yeah. And so I, I will just say this, that if you check out Meeting of the Minds, mm -hmm. um, I believe it's in June, like I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to, I'm going to be exhibiting my, my kit that uh -huh. I, my creative kit that I yeah, set up, yeah. but I'm just saying that they have spaces for people to do workshops and, and participate. And so it could be that I, I think you will find um, within the mental health community that there are people that, that, that want to embrace new modes yeah. because we know that, that just talk therapy is not sufficient for a lot of people. Right. In fact, that's a really great point. That's, that may be the edge of how to mm -hmm. how to move how to collaborate more um yeah because right. the medical the hard medical like the osteopaths and or the orthopedic doctors and all of that yeah are right. very resistant but well, the medical yeah yeah my or the, the mental health the mental yeah, health people mental yeah. health is most open yeah for for mm -hmm. a lot of for a lot of years uh did someone else want to speak um, Felicity had her hand up and then, uh, and then I, and then I'll Susan wait. also. Yeah, I'll wait. No, I was just going to say, well, from what Leslie just said, you might want to call or get in contact with the local NAMI OC, the National um, uh -huh. Alliance of Mental Illness. Mm. And see yes. if you could do an online presentation. Cause that's what I was thinking. I mean, the collaborative yeah. work, is Great idea. Her, but it was reminding me of like the AIDS quilt that if you did an online presentation and taught people, mm -hmm. you, know, you did your presentation and then afterwards you said, okay, or you send out beforehand, these are the materials you're going to need. Mm -hmm. And then people can make their own collage mm -hmm. right after you've given your presentation. And Ooh. one of two things, they could either send it to you or maybe send a picture of it to you and you could create a giant mural with photos 
of all the people who had oh my goodness, done it on their own, you know, and that, that is love beautiful, it. Felicity. I love that idea. Yes. Yeah. yeah and I, then have, <laughs> I, I am, am going to jump in. Do you, do you have a contact for uh, NAMI? No. Do you? Because, yes, I do. <laughs> Karen, yes, Karen, oh, that's good. Karen Niles has been very active. And if, if, if I can give some, I will look up her phone number and I'll be glad to get it on to you. I just need, need to know who to do that through. through. Yes, please. Um, I can give you my contact information if you want to go direct to me. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll come back to you. Let me go get something to write while some other people go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I have some contacts too. At NAMI, I can pass on to you. Oh, too. thank you. Oh, do you do you have some? Uh, if you have some felicity, then then that should take care of it. So I'll, I'll the, let you. The more, the better. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I'll give you. I'll give you Karen Niles. She's very active. So uh, okay, I'll get that information to you too. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Susan. Anna, I wanted to know what you mean by healer and body work. I had a massage. I've been doing massage therapy since oh, 80, 1989 when I was in a real bad automobile accident uh -huh. as well as acupuncture. And I've only, in all these years, only had two really good massage therapists that really connected body, mind, and spirit. Is that mm -hmm. what you're talking about, the body work? Um, so not all body not work? All, I don't have one. Oh, yeah. So from, yes, I do that. And, and I have several other people who, who do that. So I could give you a reference. Um, but also, um, body work isn't necessarily, so, so somatic body work tends to be more um, heart, mind, heart, mind, body, soul, all yeah. of it. Um, uh, craniosacral has elements of that. Um, neurovisceral therapy tends to also invite in the emotional. Um, so there are certain modalities yeah. that, that do. Um, the work that I do is specifically, especially really good for like the, ex the extremely bound, um, high, um, really difficult to treat um, kind of chronic pain. Uh -huh. um, and kind of help melt, turn a body from stone back into flesh again, <laughs> I guess you can yeah. say. Um, yeah. Because I've, I've, so had, I've had work, I had um, a torn rotator cuffs and all that. They wanted to do surgery. I had the body work do that. I do that and I actually heal and cure through that. Yeah. You, a typical massage where you go it, it, is a nothing for me. I, right. I, I want something that's working with my body, mind, and spirit. And, mm -hmm. and um, my last one retired, I don't have one. So oh, okay. if you have any re resources or referrals, I mm -hmm. would love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, something that could work with whatever. And they just inherently know I don't have to say anything. They'll ask yeah. questions. They'll ask, may ask questions, but they inherently sense and feel. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, they're very intuitive. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, you... I, can, I can email you a, a recommendation. Oh, great. I've really been yeah. searching. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. We're almost to two o'clock, so it's probably about time to wrap up. This has been wonderful.